Welcome to Everyday Reviews. Today we're driving something pretty exotic. In fact, this could be the most affordable exotic car that you can buy, and it's the Toyota Mirai. So what makes the Mirai an exotic car? Well, it's pretty rare. It uses some really expensive components, mainly underneath this hood, because this is a fuel cell vehicle. There's a fuel stack under here, which we're gonna let you see here, and this is powered by hydrogen. But before we get into what's powering it, because it's really cool, just check out the style. This is very, very, it's almost like, like, Lexus LFA a little bit, you know, it's very exotic looking. You have this super long flat hood. You have this cab back design. Yes, yeah, so when we get into the back seat, there's not a lot of room back there, but hey, most cars don't have a lot of room in their back seats either. There are two trims, there's the XLE and the Limited. This blue only comes in the Limited. The XLE comes with 19 inch wheels. This Limited comes with these super hot 20 inch chrome wheels. I, I love the styling. Seriously, the style of this thing, it doesn't shout out, hey, look at me, I'm a you know alternative fuel vehicle like the first generation did. It just really looks like a luxurious touring machine. This is a sedan, you open up that trunk and you have a decent amount of room. It doesn't go as far forward as you would expect in a sedan because you do have fuel tanks or hydrogen tanks underneath this vehicle and they're going to take up some room for sure. However, it was able to hold my scooter and a Costco run. So I guess in my books, that's a big pass. One thing though, online, this limited shows that it has a power trunk. Yet you open it, it's a manual trunk with some gas struts, but I'm not sure if they just mean a power because it has a power release. One unusual thing with driving a hydrogen fuel cell vehicle though is after when you stop and turn it off, it seems like it's still running, however it's not. What it's doing is purging. So you'll see all the steam coming from it and water comes out of the tailpipe. That's it, that's the byproduct. It is super, super clean. But just be aware of that though because if you were um, parking this in your garage, you are gonna get some moisture coming out of there and into your garage. Let's go inside because it's really cold out here. All right, we're in the Mirai. What's it like? Well, it feels like you're driving an electric vehicle. You see, how does it work? That fuel stack underneath the hood takes in oxygen from the outside and mixes it with the hydrogen that you've filled up with and that produces electricity. That electricity then goes and drives one motor, this is a rear wheel drive uh, in the back, total horsepower, 182 horsepower, so not too shabby at all. Just be careful uh, right now, it's winter time with just rear wheel drive. We do have good winter tires here, but with the torque, you can really you know, get yourself in a little bit of a jam if you're a little too aggressive off the line when it's really icy or slick out. Uh, and um, But otherwise, yeah, it's just like a, a good rear wheel drive vehicle. There is a small battery in the Mirai and it's essentially the same size battery as you'd find in a regular Toyota hybrid. So just over a one kilowatt hour, it's small. It's small and that's just gonna give you a little bit of boost when you need to get those wheels going a little bit quicker uh, along with the electricity that is being produced. It just helps it along and it's, it's nice. Remember, there, this is not a plug-in hybrid. It's not an EV, so there's no plug at all. Uh, so it's very, very easy to, uh, to drive. Not as easy to fill up, which we're gonna get to in a second. Interior, really comfortable. The ride is, it's like a luxury, I you know, sports sedan, even though it's not sporty, so per se for the drive, it's sporty looking for sure. And this is my style of vehicle, really. It's, uh, it just has a really nice ride. It's, it's not harsh at all. Very, very comfortable and quiet, really quiet. And like the only thing that you hear, once again, after you've turned it off is when you actually hear some sounds where you get some hissing and things like this of, of the vehicle purging itself with water. We do have drive modes. I've just normally been driving it in normal mode, but if we go into sport, you get a little bit more response out of it. But of course, you're gonna use more fuel, which is that hydrogen, as we mentioned. If you wanna compare this to an EV, 
Well, this has pretty well more range than any other EV out there, maybe not Lucid, but uh, the base trim, 647 kilometers of range. And the Limited gets just over 600 kilometers, probably due to more weight, more content in here. Um, that's 375 miles for our friends down south. So really, really decent. Um, and you know, it's like, I'm having like mixed emotions driving this hydrogen fuel cell vehicle. I'm honestly thinking that this could be the future or should be the future. Why? Well, with EVs, number one issue with that, and a lot of people have issue with it, is the batteries. They're, they're, they're hard to come by. There's, you know, all that, the lithium and everything else like this. I'm not concerned about the recycling. There are lots of purposes that we can reuse the batteries, but it's just the size of battery that you need for an electric vehicle, it's just so large. So if you think about uh, an average EV, it's like 70 to 80 kilowatt hours for the battery, and this is like just over one kilowatt hour. You could build 70 to 80 Mirais of these fuel cell vehicles for the same size battery as one electric vehicle. Also, for the people that are concerned of, hey, if you live in a city where Maybe your grid is old and it can't handle so many people uh, going and converting to electric vehicles. Or maybe you don't live in a house, you live in an apartment and it's not convenient to charge electric vehicle. You know, it's like we're not all lucky to live in a house with a garage uh, that you can plug in. And, you know, fortunately I can, so it works for me, but it doesn't work for everyone at all. That's why I love PHEVs. But, you know, if you don't want to have a plug at all, imagine if every second gas station had a hydrogen pump along with the gasoline as well. And you could fill up, you know, anytime that you want it. It only takes three minutes to fill this thing up. So it's much quicker than an electric vehicle, which, you know, even with DC fast charging to 80%, at the best, you know, it's gonna, you know, it's gonna take you 45 minutes, maybe closer to an hour to charge up. And yeah, electricity right now is definitely far, far more accessible than hydrogen. But in an ideal world, does this hydrogen fuel cell car not make sense? It really, really does. You're getting the best of all worlds. You are getting your electric vehicle if you want to drive an EV, it's exactly like it, uh, yet you don't have the hassles of charging and, ha and installing a charger or waiting for a charger. You just go to a gas station and just fill up. Unfortunately, there's only three of them. You know, it's not all, all rainbows and unicorns in hydrogen land. Uh, number one is that I've heard and other people that have driven this car have even had issues. If you are using a station or the pump, the hydrogen pump, and it's, if it's being used on a consistent basis or, you know, consecutively, the actual nozzle can actually freeze because it's, you're getting really compressed uh, hydrogen, it's gonna get cold and it's gonna freeze to the point that it could actually freeze onto your nozzle that you can't get it off. So that is one issue. I'm sure there are uh, ways around that in the future. The ne next thing though is hydrogen at this point right now is not inexpensive. You know, for instance, you know, in Canada or Vancouver here, it is about $14 a kilo, right? So essentially this is gonna cost you roughly the same amount as, uh, as a gas car. You're gonna be much cleaner because all you have is just water coming out of the tailpipe However, you're not really saving as much uh, as you do with an electric vehicle, which literally costs pennies to charge and to run compared to what this hydrogen fuel cell does. So, you know, at this point right now, I can really see this technology working, you know, for fleets like, you know, city fleets, you know, utility fleets, they should be using hydrogen fuel cell vehicles, if they can just build their own filling station and they can fill up whenever they want, they don't have to wait like 30, 45 minutes like an EV, so they can just operate like a car, yet they have so many vehicles in their fleet, they could really make an impact on, on some of the you know, emissions that are put out in the air. That's just, you know, that's what I'm thinking. What do you think about these hydrogen fuel cell vehicles?
I love finding surprises when I do reviews and this is one of them. I've discovered that this Mirai has the best and fastest automatic parking system that I've ever experienced. Check this out. We are beside a spot. We don't even have to pass the spot. I'm gonna hit the park. It sees the spot there. I'm gonna hit park. Again, I wanna hit start, release brake. Okay, it is just gonna do its thing. Now the difference between this and other systems that I have used or even in our own vehicle that we own is that those systems, you actually have to go and drive slowly for it to find a spot. This one here, you find your own spot and it'll just tell you if it's good or bad and it'll work for really tight spots too and you just go beside the spot, hit that park button and do it all in real time. Okay, that's it. That is how easy it was. This system is so easy that you would actually use this system opposed to the other systems where they would take too long and people would actually get probably, you know, kind of mad at you for wasting so much time. So that is a big, huge bonus of this new Mirai. And here's something that's also different. I'm gonna pull up by the curb here. Let's just say there's no other cars in front, by the and I want to parallel park here. I'm just going to go and hit park. It shows the spot. I'm going to hit start. Remove brake. Oh, there's someone coming here. It's backing up. So the other systems, like in our other car, if you use the, the parallel parking, there has to be another car in front of you to parallel park. This one, there's no other car at all. Look at this. It's amazing. And surprisingly, there are a lot of other settings you can even change on, uh, on, on this automatic parking system here. So you, if you want it faster or anything like that, you can actually do that all through the settings here. At the start, I said the Mirai could be the most affordable exotic car that you can buy, and I really mean it. First of all, it is exotic if you consider, you know, how rare uh, it is and how special it is, what's under the hood. It's, you know, there really aren't very many around. I've, I've probably seen more Rolls Royces or Lamborghini Huracans around here than Toyota Mirais for sure, but it is a limited market. In Canada, they're only sold in Vancouver and in Quebec. And in the US, it's only sold in California. So it's very, very, very limited. But yeah, it is kind of exotic. So what's it gonna cost? The base Mirai, which still comes very, very loaded with, you know, it's got the same power plant as this limited. It comes with, you know, most everything that you see here, just not certain things like the head-up display or the 20-inch wheels. Um, but it still comes with a 360 camera, by the way. Uh, it starts at 54,000 and just and change. And it qualifies for the Canadian EV incentive, which is $5,000 off. Can you believe that? That's like 50 grand for a fuel cell vehicle. This limited is gonna cost you a little bit more. That runs you about seven, just over $70,000. And that will not give you the $5,000 rebate. Uh, but still, you know, about 15 years ago, I experienced my first fuel cell vehicle. It was a Ford Focus. I remember this was uh, down at Ballard in uh, Vancouver here. And at that time, that particular vehicle, it was a prototype, mind you. The cost of that vehicle was around about $1.2 million. Yeah, we were pretty paranoid driving that car. You know, so you think of that, $1.2 million to 50,000 bucks now. You know, I guarantee you this car cost Toyota more than $50,000 to actually make. You know, this is, it's, it's, a, it's an exotic car. You know, so the only problem is, once again, you really do need to live close by uh, a filling station and not need a vehicle that you want to drive across the country in, because that's not going to happen uh, unless you can tow around your own hydrogen generator. What do you think of hydrogen fuel cell technology after watching this review of the Mirai? Do you think that, hey, this is something feasible and you know this is what we should do? 
or just continue down the path with electric vehicles and uh, just hope for some better battery technology that's gonna be able to, you know, be smaller, lighter and cheaper and more accessible. Anyways, hope you enjoyed our little review of the new Toyota Mirai. I really, really do uh, love driving this thing. and I love the look of it, but um, that's just me, my opinion. See you in the next video. Cheers. <music>